The Lamplighters League is a tactical strategy game similar to XCOM. I really enjoy turn-based games in general, so I had to put some time into this game when I saw the trailers for it. And if you've been around my channel for a little while now, then you'll know I'm a pretty big XCOM fam. I just saved him. I didn't even position. get a turn. With branching story options, a mission structure similar to XCOM, and the game rewarding you for avoiding combat through stealth, Lamplighters League is far from another copycat game as there's a lot of different game mechanics that made me really enjoy this. So together, one week at a time, we'll be discovering what Lamplight League is all about. Naturally, we'll be playing the game on average difficulty, and each week will be separated by a mission. Before we start week one, we're kind of on like week zero right now. We're essentially in a little tutorial. We start with a cutscene of a short stubby man getting murdered in a street alley, and then we find our first two protagonists on top of a roof. Ingrid is a melee specialist badass, and Latif has a funny accent, so he adds some comic relief to the crew. What's your name again? The Gentleman Jim, at your service. We find the dead man who was supposed to give us a package, but since it's on, on his body, we'll have to look around for it. We immediately begin by finding an enemy soldier, and while we can go right on over and fight him, each character has different takedown abilities. Being limited to just a few uses on each map, you can't just go around insta-killing everyone, but it does make the game a lot easier to play. We continue to sneak through the base until we find our stolen package which was being guarded by four guards. By getting a drop on them, we were able to knock out two of them and then begin working on the other ones. Most of these enemies took two to three hits to kill, and once passing through, we reach the next area of a tutorial. I promise, there's like only two spots, okay? This is the last one that we're on to week one and playing the game. There's a bunch of guards hanging out by here, and we can't sneak up on guards with a yellow ring around them as they're like prescribed ADHD medication and pre-workout drinks on shift, but the other guys with the white ring around them, they're free game. I noticed one guard was on patrol making rounds, so I waited until he walked by two other guards so I could line up a three-person takedown. Well... That felt fantastic to pull off and helped us avoid fighting most of the guards. We move on and find a man named Eddie who joins our team. Eddie can pick locks as well as throw mines which distract enemies and kill them. It also sends shockwaves through the oil or sets it on fire so it's great for setups. We make our way through the guards and reach the dock where we need to save a pilot who's going to fly us back to the guy who hired us for this mission. There are quite a few guards around him so I use Latif to sucker punch one guard and while others were investigating the area I try to sneak around him to get the jump on them, but it didn't work this time. We did get introduced to one of the mini bosses in the game named Lady Nykustro. These mini boss characters, they play a lot like the XCOM 2 War of the Chosen bosses do. You know, they're kind of in the story off and on, they're constantly popping up, making the game even more difficult than it already is. And I'm pretty certain there's going to be a certain point in the game where we can permanently kill them and remove them from the game. The game suggested I run away, but instead I had my four agents fight the lady until she had about half health and decided to teleport away. With all the guards and the boss defeated, we could finally reach the extraction zone and then find the man who hired us. The man's name is Locke and he's attempting to gain control of a tower that could destroy the entire world if it ends up in the wrong hands. Whether or not he is going to destroy the world is none of our concern. We're paid by the contract so as long as the money is better than the competitors, I'm all for the cause. Week 1 now begins and a weekly cycle in the game is fairly simple but had plenty of different options. First, you can equip your agents with different gears such as armor or trinkets, so that increases their stats. Each agent also has their own skill tree, which as you progress in, you'll gain more health, damage, power, and abilities. And each mission rewards either skill points for skills, intel for sending people out on missions, heals for well heals, and I'll explain that wet red one later, just don't worry about it for now. Our first mission is a sabotage mission, in which we must destroy a Martyu generator. Wow, it's a mouthful to pronounce. Marteau? Marteau or Martu? Which one do you guys like more? Let me know in the comment section below. <laughs> Our three agents arrive in India for the mission and begin exploring. Now this zone had a lot more enemies than the first map, so by waiting the guards out, we were able to follow them, hiding in the bushes, until I threw out some shock mines to hit a bunch of them with shock damage. After throwing two of the mines, we're now in battle, and with six guards to take down, I was really thankful that about half of them were either burning or already damaged. It took a few turns, but one by one we were able to take down these soldiers and move on to the next zone, which introduced us to a new enemy. The Acolyte is a melee character with only 80 health and a knife, making them fairly easy to take on when compared to any of the other enemies in the game. I had Latif sneak up behind an enemy so he could use his takedown on him, which basically knocks the person out, but instead of happening, the enemy's body fell through the rock platform 
And then all the other enemies came over and we're like, what the hell is going on? This dragged us into battle right away and uh, that was a lot of nonsense. The game's new, okay? Give it a little bit of a break. But Latif also has an ability in battle which places down a body double, which enemies will attack for a couple turns. It's super useful for getting out of a bad situation like this. So the guards would spend their time focused on the dummy while we were able to take down a bunch of them until it appeared like we cleared the area. The agents then approached the generator and destroyed it, completing our mission goal and allowing us to escape back to base. While we don't get experience in this game, we do get skill points to distribute amongst our characters and due to how the system is, if you can skip fighting any number of enemies, I mean all the power to you. If anything, I think the wisest way to play the game is by skipping the enemies and using stealth. But that brings us now to week 2 and we're back at the base where the group discusses their findings. We start to learn a little bit more about this possible tower of world destruction and then we get told by Locke that he knows of two other agents. We have to choose one of them, we can't save both of them, but we can go to the locations to either save an assassin type character or a healer. Before choosing the mission, I went through my characters and distributed the skill points I had as there's a few nice passive abilities that would help me on missions. You can technically dump all your points into one agent, but I think it's best to keep a balanced team that can complement each other in different ways. I decided to do the quest to save the healer as I wanted a healer in our party instead of having two different assassin type characters. And so our three agents would fly over to the location and start the mission with a clear view of multiple guards. I really like these packs of like three guards. They're great to attack with Ingrid because we just knock out all three of them and then run away as the rest of the guards go on to high alert. Unfortunately, I couldn't get my shock mind distraction to work, so we begin combat with the remaining five soldiers. Eddie is by far one of my favorite characters in the game just due to his dual wielding pistols. He shoots twice each time he attacks, and he also has a move that shoots up to four different enemies all in one go. The first turn didn't go so great, and we quickly had to reposition it as one of the enemies threw a bomb over to where we were staying at. But Ingrid also has a cool ability. Because she's a melee character and doesn't use range, if she kills anything, she gains another action point back, allowing her to attack again. So if you use her like a last hitter, like I did here, you're basically able to kill three of enemies in one turn. I took care of other two enemies of a turn after, Evan. I used up her bandages to heal everyone and attempted to find some more. Around the map, there's lots of different stuff like bandages, grenades, supplies, intel, all that kind of good stuff for missions. So while you can just sneak through the maps and all the enemies and try to clear it as fast as possible. I do think that if you spend some time exploring, then you end up picking some different stuff up like supplies that'll help you out in the game. I went to the next area in the game and was able to charge three soldiers before entering combat. While there are a lot of enemies, I found the guys using knives are really weak and they don't move very far each turn. So while it does take me a few turns, I was able to pretty easily wipe out all the enemies and make contact with a combat medic named Anna Sophia. We lead her and our other agents to the extraction zone and complete the mission. Once we're back at a base, and talking a lock, we can get ready for our next mission, which starts week three. Now that we have four agents, we can send one agent on a solo mission, which they will complete while we're on our main mission. That's a, that's a lot of missions for one sentence, man. Apparently, we're trying to find this Tower of Light, as well as prevent the evildoers from getting there first. So I went on to spending our skill points on some new abilities, and then I had to choose between the next mission, which was to either save a healer lady or a weapon man. They won't be playable agents once we get them back to their base, but they will offer us services. Unfortunately, someone who does massages and that can provide happy endings didn't need saving, so, so I just opted into sending Latif on a solo mission, and then I had the rest of the agents go to save the healer lady. Once landing, we could immediately see her, so I attempted to set up a good takedown. I threw out two mines, and since Anna also uses mines, I had her throw out two more for a total of four. This helped a bunch as Ingrid was able to knock down two of them for a turn while the rest of the group began attacking. It only took two turns, and we were able to knock out all of the enemies, so we made contact with the old healer lady who, surprisingly, could move really well for an old skin bag of cobwebs. <laughs> Man, that's a brutal way to describe an old person. I wrote that last night. <laughs> She has no fighting abilities other than support, so we won't be putting her in the front lines anytime soon. In the next area, I was able to take down two guards who were hanging out as solos, and by picking up a yellow ball of light, it recharged Ingrid's takedown. So I could use it again twice, but I completely missed the guard the first time, and I was able to activate it again quickly to take him down. Still, it's, what a joke. The next guard was a bit more aware. He spotted us turn the corner, so I tried to run into the bush, but it didn't really work. I, I mean, he found us, but it ended up where 
working because on the bright side he was trapped in the bush and now we were able to kill him pretty easily. In the next yard I spotted three guards coming our way along with a fourth one very close by. So without any time to place a trap or takedown I went into turn based mode and I used Ingrid's knockout move approximately where I thought the soldiers were going to be. And to my surprise, it actually worked. Knocking out two enemies, but we had nine in total to fight. Turn by turn, we started holding our ground and hiding behind covers, just allowing the enemies to push us. The only person I had pushing any enemies was Ingrid, since she can only use melee combat. But to use Ingrid efficiently, I figured out that if I have her be the last hit on enemies, she'll be able to move again and do another last hit on an enemy and do it again. So my goal was just to damage enemies with other agents and then allow Ingrid to knock them out as if she kills them she gets to attack again. A few turns later and we were down to just one enemy being able to knock him out and move on to extraction. At the end of each mission, we're awarded different cards with different abilities. At the start of a game, this doesn't change much unless you get specific cards, but I found this a very interesting system later on in the game. It adds a little bit of random variety and possibilities to the combos you can pull off with each agent. The healer we saved will sell us upgrades using that weird red stuff I was talking about before. Some of these upgrades unlock passives and battles, and others unlock new items for us to buy in a store. But with that, we're now beginning week 4. This time, we'll be sending all four agents to do a big mission. Most missions you can only send three agents but for these big ones we're allowed to send four. We're trying to steal a tower keystone which will help us get in closer to opening the tower door. We need four keys in total and this first one is guarded by a bunch of soldiers. I mean what a surprise. I looked around and noticed there was a separate path which only had two guards opposed to seven or more so I took the easy route by using Latif and knocked them out. We then waited a moment for the guards on patrol to walk by so Eddie could throw a shock mine and and distract them. That pretty much put like all the guards on high alert but one by one I was able to take them down using the shock mines. I then passed the objective found another yellow orb, and then used that to replenish more of Eddie's mines, but unfortunately my stealth skills failed us as we walked into combat with a one remaining enemy. I was able to take him down pretty easily, but once we grabbed the keystone, something crazy actually happened. Some fire people spawned out of nowhere and began fighting us. There are a lot of crazy enemies later on in the game, and this one is no exception. They combust on fire when attacked, and they can cause burning on your agents and to the area around them. I used frag grenades and a poison bottle to attack all three of them. I knocked out one of them, but then he just began floating, so I figured, you know, video game brain, he's going to explode. Some kind of big fireball explosion, so I ran away. But if you end your turn when the fire dude is floating, then they'll come back to life with 80 health. On top of this, they targeted Eddie and were able to knock him down by placing him in a mortally wounded state. When you reach zero health, you have three turns to pick up a character before they die, so it's important to not get too overwhelmed by enemies. One death can leave you with a lot less power, as seeing as you only have three to four companions per mission, losing one person is basically 25% to 33% of your power. Either way, we were able to kill the fire people and then move on to trying to escape. This was my first great taste of the rewards of stealth. Since there's no XP in the game, fighting enemies doesn't really get you much other than, you know, time sink. Sometimes you get an odd item drop, but you know what I'm saying. It's a waste of time. So I started by lining up three soldiers and taking them down as I've been doing. And then I decided to run away and hide. This led the other guards to running around the area like, whoa, what was that? What's going on? And while that was happening, I could basically sneak right into the extraction zone and complete the mission. We now have two card slots for each agent, allowing us to stack even more buffs and abilities onto them. And with that, we now move on to week five. At this point, Eddie is pretty freaked out by the fire people, and he wants to quit, but since the court, who are the soldiers we've been fighting, since they know who Eddie is, he's basically an outlaw now, and trapped on an island, which is supposedly safe. It's like some gang level shit, like you can't leave now, you know too much. <laughs> on top of that, the mortal danger state now has the ability to permanently kill our agents after it happens three times on a mission. On top of that, if they reach that state even once, they'll need to take the following week off from missions to heal. So I went and I spent some some skill points and stocked up on some items before going out to a world map. As of week 5, there is now a nice little doomsday clock. It's got the three factions we're fighting against 
shown above, and each mission we do will impact the bar of progress towards one of them. This is very similar to XCOM, and if anything, almost like a carbon copy of a format, but I do enjoy the type of gameplay that this offers. I think this should be normalized in a strategy genre by now. Not only do we have to reconsider the rewards and the difficulty of the missions, but we also have to keep an eye out on prioritizing the right missions so that these powerful groups don't take over. We had a mission to go search for a new agent, so I sent LaField to go do that mission, while the other three agents went on a standard theft mission to steal some intel from an enemy garrison. The mission's only goal was to steal the court documents, which were right near the spawn point, so I snooped around the area and found an ideal setup to take down some of the enemies. I used a shock mine to take down the first one, followed by another shock mine to take out the second enemy. I tried to line up Ingrid's charge, but <laughs> I wasn't fast enough, so now we're in normal battle. Now, luckily, there's only four enemies, so this wasn't going to be a difficult battle at all. Ingrid's last hit knockout ability made half of them go down in no time, and the other two guards were no problem either as of turn two. I sent the group onto the docks where there were only two guards, and I waited to line them up for a charge, instantly killing both of them. I then saw the other guards who remained, and they seemed to be on patrol. By moving around the docks and staying out of sight, I was able to completely avoid any more combat and made it to the extraction zone. This skipped like seven enemies at least, like an entire battle. I was so happy about this. That mission took a total of six minutes of playtime, which opened my mind up to playing the game faster when possible. Latio found the location of a new agent which we can attempt to rescue, but first we get told about a device Locke is working on and that we'll be bringing it to the tower. We have to find three different artifacts first though, which are in the hands of the bad guys, of course, and with that we now begin week six. Again, I would send someone on a mission to go look for more agents, but this time I sent Anna, as I wanted to use Latiel a little bit more. This time, the location has a lot more suited up enemies, as well as a fire dude, so I started by knocking out two enemies and attempting to make contact. I really wanted just to do that and escape, but the soldiers must have heard the thumping and the painful screams of their companions as they ran over and now we had to fight them. Moving on, I tried to send Latiel up a rope as his class lets him climb stuff, but right away, two guards started approaching him, and what I can only describe was an utter moment of panic. <laughs> I went into turn base mode and I activated his special to deploy a clone. He then moves back down off the platform. I really didn't want him to try to solo two soldiers or possibly die up there. Surprisingly, it worked though and I was able to move on trying to escape. One enemy sprinted around a corner and found us near a car. I mean, to no surprise, there was like four of us there, but he went down before he could even get to use his turn. I then decided instead of attempting to escape right away, I wanted to charge over to the supply cap as we could definitely use some supplies. This was optional to do, and there were five enemies there, but we were pretty much sandwiched. This was not really a good spot to be in. First, we'd knock down a fire guy for a turn, and then I went on to killing the knife guys. I would then focus onto the soldiers with guns, and then finally the fire guy. This made the battle go pretty well, and it only took us three turns with minimal damage. I then grabbed the supply cache and started heading towards extraction. Now, near the escape point, there were a lot of guys, something like seven to nine of them. So I started to throw shock mines out in an oil pit, which luckily sent a lot of them on fire. This took down a few of them, leaving us with only around five enemies left, but on top of that, there's a reinforcement beacon, which would be sending more enemies in a few turns. We had some gunmen pretty close to us, so I focused on knocking them out, and then I moved on to the fireman and the guys in the back. By the time we made it there, the reinforcements arrived and were easily taken care of, allowing us to escape and complete the mission. Upon getting back to the world map and starting week seven, we find out that Anna found an agent who we can actually fight with. With that at hand, I decided to prioritize that mission and send Anna on another solo mission just to get us some extra resources. The agent recruitment mission was top of priority, as if we're able to save him, it's going to give us one more person to send out on missions. So we get to the location and we see our contact in the middle of some gunmen knife men, and a fireman. <laughs> I gotta figure out better names for them. <laughs> so I threw a shock mine to get things started and caused them to suffer some burning damage, and then we just went in guns blazing. There were seven enemies in total to take care of, so I set up positions and then started fighting the ones closest to us. The melee units were basically one hit, so I shifted priority onto them and then took a few of them down. I was really close to having Eddie get knocked out, but thankfully we were able to clutch it out and defeat the enemies all in only three turns. We then made contact with an agent known as G and started to walk with him towards the exit. I used takedowns to knock two of the guards and then began a battle with remaining four enemies. This battle was a lot easier as we had less enemies to fight and now we had an extra agent on the 
team, so by turn 2 we were out of battle and heading towards the extraction point. Mission complete, we got some skill points, a new card, and a new agent to send on missions. Gianni uses a sword for his special attacks and also has a decent ranged attack as well. For now, I'll mainly be using the main characters we've been using so far, as I think if I start distributing skill points across everyone, it'll be kind of difficult. But no matter what, it's great to have extra people to go do those solo missions. Moving on, we now start week 8. So I sent out 2 agents on solo missions and sent the other 3 to do a sabotage mission, which had one of the mini bosses present at it. Once on the map, it was pretty easy to find the boss as they were marked on the map with a big icon. We ran over to the location and spotted that she had 2 guards with her. So I used the shock mines that we had to knock both the guards down, and with only her left, I had my 3 agents jump the mini boss and begin fighting. This only took me 3 turns, as even though she had 350 health, having 3 characters fighting one made it pretty straightforward. After defeating her, she teleports away, we get a reward, and we're on to the actual mission. We're already injured, so I had to start looking around for some bandages, as well as a yellow orb to restore our shock mines. And there's an optional quest to go get a stolen artifact on this map, so I decided to go and try and obtain it. There were exactly 6 enemies there, and since Eddie upgraded his light em up ability, which allowed him to shoot 4 people before four, now he can shoot up to six. So I had him shoot four of the enemies and then two of the explosive barrels and this sent the enemies into shambles as they were all injured and by the time their turn had started half of them were dead and the other half were knocked down for the turn so we didn't even get to attack. After securing the artifact we move on to the actual mission at hand destroying a radio tower. There were a few enemies along the way who were easy enough to handle followed by a lot more that were around the radio tower. We now had to kill the monster and then move on to the rest of the guards. I try to use the other way around where you climb up a ladder and then go down another one but that second ladder just wouldn't work for the life of me it must be glitched or something okay new game i give it that i just honestly i couldn't see what i was doing wrong there's nothing blocking the ladder and i could go up the first one so it didn't make any sense i didn't want to risk it though and get in, <laughs> stuck into combat up there so i went around and i killed the last guard that was there and then destroyed the four generators for the tower now some reinforcements would arrive who i thought were going to have a fight with us but once they spawned we went back into real time mode so i just ran away <laughs> and we got into extraction mission complete and we're now back onto the world map where we're being greeted by a cutscene from what appears to be one of the many managers I've had while working in retail locations in the real world. The future has a name, and that name is Marto. Of course, progress comes at a price, and you, my friends, are going to pay it in labor, working the assembly lines until your bodies break down. And then... We'll work your souls. There's a place in Marto Industries for everyone, the living and the dead alike. Welcome to the future. It's the only one you'll ever know. Apparently this was a dream and appears that everyone had the same dream. This happened because the purple guys made progress towards completing their goal. But with that we now begin week 9. Only this week and one more to go. I went to the old healer lady and I grabbed an upgrade which allows us to bring up to 2 items now into the battlefield. Evan I sent 2 of our agents on solo missions with the other 3 going in to attempt to save a man who's a weapons expert. He was the guy we could have saved at the start of a game and he basically gives us similar upgrades to the old healer lady just based around weapons. When we get there, we can go right to the weapons expert, but I decided to try and recover an artifact first. No matter how I approached this battle, it seemed like it was going to be difficult with the terrain and how far all the enemies were from each other, but when we were hiding, I decided it'd be best to set up on overwatch mode because everybody was close by and just see what happens. Hopefully they walk into us. And of course, they decided to walk around. Overwatch mode did not work, <laughs> but we were able to take care of a monster and a few enemies in the area with the last guy being a huge pain in the ass. I mean, it took me like four turns to kill him because his movement was broken and he was across the map. But after that, I was able to grab the artifact and then make her way over to the contact. I then tried to take down a solo guard, but miserably missed and had to punch and shoot him to death. It still worked out though, just man, I'm really bad with hitting that one move. <laughs> we made our way to the contact who was being guarded by a lot of enemies. We really lucked out with there only being one guy who had a gun, as once we killed him and the monster, all the other enemies could do was try to run up to our location while being killed. Those melee knife unit guys, yeah, they really suck. We made contact with an ally, but some enemies came in from the reinforcement beacon, so we had to manually run over to the extraction zone. Still, we were able to make it there and complete that mission. 
And now we're back at the base and on week 10, the final week of this video. That weapon expert that we saved had some interesting upgrades to check out. And since we had a lot of red stuff and skill points, I grabbed a bunch of stuff. Also upgrading a majority of her character's abilities, along with buying some armor and items, which will help us in combat. And as always, I would send two of our characters out on solo missions and the other three on the mission. In this one, we had to steal some logs, which will reveal the location of another important mission. So I sent Ingrid, Eddie, and Anna. This is an indoor warehouse type of building filled with guards and monsters. First, we found a room with no enemies, but it did have some supplies and items. I stocked up, and then I moved on to the next room, which had multiple guards around it. Using our shark mines, I was able to take care of four of these enemies. At the last two, we would fight in a normal battle, but that didn't take too long either. Only two turns, and we barely got damage. The next room we went into had a couple of throws, which was really a first, so instead of fighting them head on, I right away take down two of them and finish off one remaining guard inside of a room. We then head to the next room, and this one was full of enemies. So using a shock mine, I was able to start a fight with one enemy dead and the other literally on fire, but we now have two enemies to fight. The moment I killed one of them, though, this number quickly rises to nine. <laughs> I knew this would not be an easy battle, and our best bet would be to let the enemies come to us. There's also ghosts now. Yeah, I'm not joking. Real ghosts that try to shoot lightning and shock us. They also have 210 health, making them quite a bulky unit to fight. This was the first battle I think I really wasn't certain I'd win. I tried to make best use out of the situation, and I had Eddie shoot each enemy from the start. Since I equipped him with an armor shattering talisman as one of the items, he was able to break all of their armors right Right away while the other two agents attempted to whittle down the health of a ghost. There's also a reinforcement beacon in the back sending more enemies in a couple turns. And on top of that, they are also sending in the giant hand from Super Smash Bros. Melee. <laughs> no, could you imagine? <laughs> yeah, we're pretty powerful and the battle was getting fairly challenging. I decided to try to take down the ghost first as they hit for a lot of damage each turn and after shifting focus to the other enemies, the Throws would end up attacking Ingrid and sent her below half health. So I then began being up the throws and the remaining ghosts. There was only one enemy left so I hit a party heal and started to push until I discovered it was a new enemy type known as a purifier. These guys use fire and move closer to you every time you shoot them. I was able to kill him but since that fire guy experience I didn't really think he'd explode and yeah he exploded right next to all my agents. Ingrid was left on fire and surprisingly she didn't die or get knocked out but she was left at like a slither of health. I grabbed the logs that we needed to get and I tried to run out of the doors to the the extraction zone. There was one guard in a way, but I stood in front of him before he did anything and just one shot him, which was a pretty good joke. The guy's not a very good guard, okay? I hope he was only getting paid by the hour. And with that, we complete the mission and return to the base to which Locke explains that that mission unlocked another mission to attack the enemy's base directly. But that brings us to the end of week 10 and the end of my adventure. Of course, I'll likely be playing more of this game, especially if you guys like it and engage with it well. But before I get into that let's talk about the game itself and what i think of it based off my first impressions the developers didn't send me a game key for this game so you don't gotta worry about my opinion being spewed okay this stems from my opinion of being a lifelong gamer when i was playing of a normal difficulty and i had a lot of fun with it I find that I'm pretty good with these types of games, but the normal difficulty is usually the sweet spot for me. For this game, the normal difficulty was really easy, so either I'm getting really good, or this game is just a bit easy. So coming from a guy who always chooses the normal mode over the hard mode on the first time playthroughs, if you are good at these types of games, I'd suggest just going for the hard mode right from the start. Other than that though, I think this game is awesome, a solid 8 out of 10 for first impressions. The story is a bit much, and it's hard to keep up with, but it's got me a little bit interested. I'm not sure if there's like too much unnecessary dialogue or maybe it's too little but after a few hours playing the game i really don't know the factions names that well not a bad thing just the game stands out to me for having a diverse cast of characters all with different backgrounds and personalities so it's going to take a lot of time to really connect with each one of them or recognize each one of them now i got to play this game since i had an xbox game pass this month and it came out through it so i'd recommend you do that if you do not want to buy it at launch price i still think launch price is pretty fair for it but if a game goes on sale and reaches about $20 Canadian or $15 USD, it's a steal, and it'll likely be one of your favorite games of the year if you're into these types of games. Anyways, if you'd like me to continue playing Lamplighters League, please like the video and comment. Tell me what you thought about this game or what you thought about the video. Either the way though, I had a great time playing this game. Remember to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. 
You can join my Discord server to hang out and be a part of my community, or check out my Patreon to support my content financially. As always though, I just want to thank you guys for watching, hanging out, coming to chill. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.